So we had a webinar yesterday with uh, Belena where we deployed a fleet of Raspberry Pi 4s. And uh, I thought it was really cool. I uh, really enjoyed uh, learning about Belana Cloud and how we could deploy FlowFuse to those devices. Super simple. Uh, so I thought I'd make a really quick how-to video and follow along. So to do this, uh, we are going to start off with this blog, uh, deploying the FlowFuse device agent via Belina. Definitely recommend taking a look at this. It will guide you through the process. Uh, one of the biggest things we need to find on this page is uh, this link that takes us to the GitHub repository that we see here on the left-hand side. And it says, deploy FlowFuse device agent with Belena. Uh, so we're gonna go through that exercise right now. So we're gonna click deploy with Belena. And we're gonna create a new uh, fleet. We're gonna call this just video. And our default device is going to be a Raspberry Pi 4. And we're going to create and deploy. So it's going to take a second to pull that information down. It's actually building it from that GitHub repository. Uh, but in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to bring a Raspberry Pi that's already in one of the fleets right now. Uh, if you need to um, build or figure out how to bring in a, uh, let's say, a device into the Blina Cloud instance, I will link it in the bio for you to follow along or in the guide below. So. To do that, we're just going to skip over a step and we're going to go to fleets and I have my Bellino webinar from yesterday and we're just going to grab this one and bring it over to that new fleet we just created. And in this particular case, it's video, move, and number of affected devices. So if I move back over now to that fleet mode and select video, which we are doing now, we will see that um, our devices, uh, if I click on Grace Pi, we will see it's starting to take a lot of new information. It's gonna be clearing things out. So it looks like it's deployed now, and all we have to do is bring in this device.yaml. Um, so, but there's a first couple of things we need to do first. We're gonna go over to our uh, FlowFuse application, and we're gonna have a Belina, we're gonna create, a uh, new instance and we'll just call this video today and we're going to use a small and node red 3.1.3 and we're going to create instance the next thing that we need to do is we need to tell this raspberry pi where home is and to do that we can go through to video and click on devices and we can create a, or we can say go over here and say create a new device but this would mean that every single time a new device came online to this let's say balina fleet it wouldn't know where to go uh we are going to actually go over to team settings sorry my bad and we're going to go to devices and we're going to add a token and we're just going to call this one video as well and we're going to auto assign this to video and create. So now we are given a provisioning token that we can use to tell where home is. So I'm going to copy this clipboard and download it. But if you go back over here to the, uh, the blog, you scroll all the way down to the bottom. It says we need to convert this to a base 64. Um, and that device YAML is what we just created. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to convert this file. So if I click on my putty, um, we are going to create this file in this instance. We're gonna clear this thing out. And we are going to nano, um, and we're gonna say device3.yaml. We'll just make sure we use that terminology and we're going to say control X save modified buffer say yes and so then we will say base 64 dash W 0 device 3 YAML now I will be given uh, this string of characters and we will copy that over and I will come over to the Belena cloud and where it says I'm gonna go actually into fleets and we're gonna select our fleet, which is video, and then we're gonna go into variables. 
we're going to add a variable. We're going to add it to all services. And the service right now is going to be flowfuse device underscore YML, which you can see right here. Actually, I'm going to copy it because I missed the underscores. And we are going to paste whoop, paste that uh, code that we received from our um, conversion. And we're going to paste that right here. And it looks like I got an extra G at the end. We're going to click Add. And what's going to happen now, if I switch back over to my devices, whoop, we need to apply changes and go to devices, Raspberry Pi 4. And you can actually see that it's now found that YAML device. Uh, it's going to phone home and tell Flowfuse that it has found that device. So if I come back over here, I'm done with this now, and I go to my applications, Belena, and then look at my video, which is the new uh, Node-RED instance that I created, and click on devices, we will now see that there's a new device, but it hasn't received a snapshot just yet. So let's do that now. So when I click on, and what a snapshot is, is just any type of uh, flow instructions. Right now, if I open up this editor, there isn't going to be any instructions or flows. If I click it, we'll just drop something down right here and we'll say debug node and deploy. Very simple, straightforward. There we go, pay for, play load. And what we're gonna do is say, okay, this is good. And uh, we will go to our snapshots and we'll create a new snapshot and we'll call this init. Set as target and create. So now what this has done, it says I'm creating a snapshot of my device, of my uh, cloud instance of Node-RED, and we're deploying that cloud instance of Node-RED down to our device. So if I come back over here, we see we have deployed a snapshot. We have not deployed a snapshot just yet. It says that the target snapshot is in it and we're waiting for it to be deployed. It looks like we've got some activity over here on the right hand side for Belena. Give it a few seconds and we should see some of the information being passed down. There it goes. So let's just give this a few minutes. And there we go. It has the active snapshot. Uh, looks like it's starting up now. Uh, so we'll let it give it a second for it to sync. And if we go into developer mode, we're going to enable it. And then we're going to also open up the device editor. And we can see that our flow has been deployed down to the device. You can see the indication of the device name at the top. And we're good for now. So let's just go ahead and close this L down. And what we are going to do is turn it off at developer mode. Confirm. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to deploy a um, InfluxDB. So we're going to go ahead and deploy. InfluxDB, I can paste that in the login. We're going to use an existing fleet and we're going to select video and say deploy to fleet. Now it is building and we should see the new device here shortly, the new service, I should say. You can see now that it is downloading uh, to our device, our Raspberry Pi. We'll give that a few minutes. All right, it is now completed with the service running. So we're going to go back to our um, instance of video, and we are going to open the editor back up. Now I'm going to copy in some code, and we can save, and I will create a uh, flow uh, for this and share it on nodered.org. And we can get rid of this. Import. 
And if you're curious about which uh, buttons I was pressing it there, it's control I and control E for import and export. Looks like we're missing some of the uh, tools, so we'll go ahead and add those now. From the palette, go to manage palette, and we will install these shortly. We'll give them a few seconds for those to install. And there it goes. So, uh, looks like we have one more, which is the Contrib OS, but we have the Influx DB. Uh, that is the node that we'll use to communicate to the Influx DB. We have the Node Red Data Generator. I've got a tool that generates some data for us. Um, very nice for creating JSON data. And then we have Node Red Contrib OS, which is going to be gathering some uh, details from the device so that we can um, get some, maybe some real data from, let's say, our Raspberry Pi in this case. We're going to click close and make sure that everything is there uh, like we expect. I'm going to click deploy. Looks like everything is good. I did already include a, a local. Uh, so uh, as far as device, uh, we create a default database as MyDB. And if I scroll over here to the left-hand side, uh, we start at the very beginning. Initiate database creation should happen on startup. So when I click save, uh, we will see on startup or when inject once, it will set off this and create MyDB. So let's open up the debug debug and we'll click deploy error connected ah yes because we are in the cloud we are not on a device that has influx db set up that can be configured and changed so that you can deploy both in the cloud and on-prem or let's uh, say at our fleet uh using environment variables but we won't be covering that today so now that this is set up we are now going to deploy this to our device. So if I go back over to instances and flow views and I click on snapshots, we're going to create a new snapshot and we're going to set it as target and we will call this um, in Lux DB and click create. Now when I switch over to devices, we will see our device and we see over here on the right side, we're getting a snapshot. Our influx DB is the target and we will be passing down uh, not only the flows, but we will also be telling the node red device to be installing the new um, nodes that we had installed, which include the node red contrib influx DB, node red contrib OS, and the node red node data generator. So you can see those installing on the right hand side. So we'll just give this a second to uh, run. All right, it actually looks like it might have already completed. So what we are going to do now is we are going to enable developer mode and take a look. And we have, uh, let's see how things are going. Uh, so in theory, I should be able to inject a data point. I believe my debug is by default off. We're going to turn that on for us and deploy. And I'm going to inject once. And we should see some data. So right now we have uh, initiated the initial uh, creation of the DB, my DB. And we have set one data point to go into that, uh, into that um, messages. So let's go ahead and see if we get anything back from the database now. We do receive a single object and everything is working as expected. Now, the rest of the video, we're going to go through a little bit about how these flows function. Uh, if you're interested, uh, follow along. So the data generation, the first thing we do is we inject. Ideally, what we would do um, if you're pulling data, real-time data, you're going to say repeat interval, let's say every five seconds. And we can click save and set that up. So it'll do that for us. Deploy that. 
and we'll probably set this to modified flows. And in this data generation, you can see that we have created a kind of a mustache uh, structure. And if you're curious about how that works, uh, basically, if you use the mustache and then you key in these, let's say, keywords or variables like lat, lot, it'll run these commands within the system. So we have latitude, longitude, speed, distance left on gas, which I created an integer between one and 500 country and you can paste that country variable in. Well, with this node here is capturing the um, uptime for that the Raspberry Pi and see how long it's been alive. And then we have the uh, doing a little bit of data manipulation, moving it and storing it because these uh, nodes do just paste things directly to the message.payload. So we have to store this in a different location while we start gathering this information. We also have memory doing the same thing and then we have some change rules so what we are doing here is again moving things around in the message dot store dot total mem uh it's where i'm kind of storing everything uh it is the message dot store and then i also am doing things where i'm creating a topic uh, that can be used if you're wanting to send it over to mqtt uh, and i'm using an environmental variable our message our structure for the topic is trucks slash our flow fuse instance ID. So this isn't actually going to work for us particularly today because we really actually need to be using it as flow fuse device ID. So that is a bug. I'll change that right now. And we'll paste that right there. So our topic will reflect that. Um, so, but basically we're able to use environmental variables so that when you start storing this data and maybe let's say bringing them all together, uh, you can leverage uh, the environment variables. And if you don't know what environment variables, I can show you that now. And let me make sure that we've got everything. And then last but not least, we've got a template node that kind of structures and pay, puts this in the structure that our influx DB wants to take the data. And we are sending that in an influx batch structure. And so we'll deploy that. And I mentioned environment variables. So if I switch over here back to my flows, uh, my flow fuse instance, uh, I can switch over to settings. And underneath environment, we have our environment variables. In this particular case, my device name is gathered from uh, my Belina Cloud and my Raspberry Pi. And we see some other additional information for this particular device. And you're able to actually add your own your own uh, variables as well. So remember when I mentioned uh, having an influx DB not in the cloud, this was what you could do if you came back over to your instance, you can click on settings, environment, and you could put in an environment variable for your uh, cloud instance. And multiple different ways of ma managing that, you could do a, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? You can send it via um, a lookup table or whatever mechanisms you would like to do so. So refer turning back to our node red instance, we are sending the data to our influx DB in that location. And we'll clear things out. I'm gonna return off this debug node so we don't have as much information coming through here. Um, and then I have got a test insert data. So if you're kind of curious about being able to send your own data, um, you can do that here as well. And then we have the initiate data uh, database creation that's done on startup. And it's essentially done so that we have a place to put our data. And the last but not least is our read from database. So when I click this inject node, we can now see all the data that's been stored into this database. Probably should be looking at maybe, let's say the last 24 hours or some other mechanisms, but it's a good way to get started. All right, well, I appreciate you following along. Uh, if you find this uh, interesting, please go to YouTube and give it a thumbs up, and we appreciate if you followed. Thank you.